Hello everyone, back to today's first video, doing GMA Friday for today's first video. So as was on a Friday, we're having a month head look ahead with the Japanese and CFS b 2 bars. So it's going to take us uh, into February. So I think we get through to the first week of February uh, with uh, GMA Friday this week. So we are heading on into kind of like the, I wouldn't say the final stages of winter, but certainly in towards the latter stages of the winter. Um, we haven't really had any winter yet at all. We'll see whether the GMA and the CFS v 2 uh, have any um, indications of colder, more seasonable uh, type conditions, maybe a little bit of snow uh, coming up for you very uh, shortly. Just to say that the second video update that will be, that will be released later on this afternoon is the week's 10-day video, and that includes all of the regular features. So we're going to begin with the GMA 500 millibar height anomaly from the northern uh, hemisphere, uh, north pole and arctic view down uh so of course this is the um north pole of the arc just here the wider arctic is going to be around there and the mid latitudes of the northern hemisphere will be around there uh so blue is extrapolating to below average heights which is low pressure yellow orange and red to above above average heights which is high pressure these are broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 10th through to the 17th of uh, January. So in the week ahead, it looks like we've got a bit of a northwest southeast split, but average heights, low pressure out to the west and the northwest, above average heights, which is high pressure to the east and to the southeast. Uh, the flow of the jet is doing something a little bit like that. So uh, it means we're still mild in the week ahead. Southern and eastern parts of the country will get the driest weather. Northern and western areas could be a little bit unsettled. There's also uh, a warm ridge on the eastern side of America and then a cold trough into the western part of America. So the jet stream doing something a bit like that. Uh, you see what I mean? So uh, it joins up around uh, there. And that means that uh, overall we are still Atlantic driven. We'll still be bringing low pressure from off the Atlantic. But the south and southeast could be a little bit drier at times. Into week two, which takes us from the 17th to the 24th of January, the area of above average heights then starts to exert its authority over the north and west of Europe. High pressure really building in to the west and the north of Europe. Low pressure is out in the middle of the Atlantic. There is a ridge in the southeastern part of America, but it looks like this cold trough is beginning to progress further eastwards into um, other northern parts of the states. Jets are doing something like that. So still uh, bring cold air out of Northern America into the Atlantic. And so that just peps up jet stream further. However, this could be a drier week as we are under an area of high pressure. What might happen there is that we might start generating some frost, maybe some fog. So as the high pressure takes over, we might turn a little bit drier but also potentially uh, a little bit colder. However, this is not a particularly cold pattern. There's no northern blocking to force out genuinely cold Arctic or Siberian air up to that point. And then up to uh, weeks three and four, which is the 24th of January to the 7th of February. This is how we look. Above average heights still very close to the country across central uh, and northern parts of Europe, below average heights in the Atlantic. So basically the pattern's continuing. It does look as though northern and maybe some northeast parts of America would be colder here. But for us, we still remain in this Atlantic-driven flow, just a little bit drier. And the frost might, uh, the high pressure again, might produce some frost across particularly more southern and eastern parts of the country. But still, this is not a particularly cold winter's pattern because it's still not bringing in genuinely cold Arctic or Siberian air up to the beginning of February. This is tropical mid latitude view, so you can see how the temperature and precipitation anomalies compare. So we come back to week one. This is the 10th to the 17th of January. UK in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it, of course, with above average heights to our south and below average heights out to the northwest. So we remain mild in the week ahead, most unsettled in the northwest, driest in the south and southeast. The precipitation anomaly is generally above average in the week ahead, particularly for more northern and western parts of the country, but really all places are coming out with uh, slightly above average rainfall at the very least. 
and very mild in the week ahead uh, too. So um, again, we see the temperature normally well above average, kind of two to three degrees above average in the week ahead. Another very, very mild week coming up. Notice how cold it is across much of Canada. <laughs> excuse me, and into a far northwest of America, while more southern, eastern, and southeastern parts of the states look very, very mild indeed. Into week two, so this is where the high pressure takes over. This is the 17th to 24th of January, with a big area of above average height same building in across not just the UK, but most parts of northern Europe as well. High pressure really strongly taking over there. Temperature anomalies are still above average. I think it will struggle to be as mild as this, given we're under an area of high pressure. I reckon that the temperature anomaly is, the model is looking at the upper air temperatures, which probably will be relatively mild, because the ridge is building up from the south and southeast, so there won't be anything particularly cold from an upper air temperature perspective. But I think on the surface, it would imply inversion type conditions, and so I think the anomaly overall would be quite a bit colder than that suggests, with risk of frost and fog. Also, the these more sensitive parts of Europe probably quite a bit colder than that shows as well. Precipitation wise, of course, as high pressure is building, it's turning drier. So the um, wettest conditions in the far north and west of the country, most places actually going a little bit drier than average. And then uh, week three and four, which is 24th of January to the 7th of February, uh, look like that. So again, the above average heights are very close to country and across central parts of Europe as well. It looks like it's a relatively dry and anti-cyclonic period. The precipitation anomaly for weeks three and four from late January into early February. Wetter than average still for northern parts of the country, near normal for England and Wales. Most parts of Europe are looking quite dry. Temperature anomalies are still holding up above average. Uh, so around one to two degrees above average. This will be a very, very mild January, of course, if this is right. Over in America, again, Canada looks very cold and does look as though some of these cold and average temperatures are beginning to force their way uh, further south and east into other parts of the states as well. Things getting colder on the uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, but for us, we remain very, very mild if this is right up to the end of January anyway. See how the CFS compares. So again, this is the week one, 500 millibar height anomaly from the CFS V2. This time, this is the 10th to the 16th of January. The coming week has below average heights out to the northwest. It has above average heights to the south and to the southwest. The flow and the jet going something like that. It looks mild and uh, for the north and west, the most of the conditions are there. The driest conditions are to the south and southeast. But I think all areas, again, would be uh, generally uh, unsettled here in the week ahead, really. Not the case of week two, though. So this is the 17th, 23rd of January. Then high pressure takes over. That large area of above average heights builds in across the north and west of Europe and through Central Europe as well. So uh, that's in line with what JMA is showing, of course. A mainly dry week coming up there. The model, I'm almost certain, will say milder than average. I think it could be a little bit colder, though, than the model suggests if we start generating some overnight frost. All change again, though, for week three, which is the 24th uh, to the 30th of January. The above average heights then moving back into central parts of Europe. Below average heights developing out to the northwest. This looks like it's beginning to turn more unsettled uh, once again, but also milder. And then week four rounds it all off, which is the 31st of January to the 6th of February. Above average heights there through central southern parts of Europe. Below average heights up to the north and west of the country. The winds come in from the southwest. So remains mild even into February, but just turns more unsettled. Again, absolutely nothing doing whatsoever there from a cold perspective. If you're waiting for winter to arrive, if you're waiting for snow, uh, there is absolutely absolutely nothing whatsoever doing there in either the JMA or the CFS to suggest um, snow or genuinely cold conditions are on the way in the next four weeks. Temperature anomalies uh, with CFS V2 in the weekend from the 10th to the 16th of January above average. going to be a mild of an average week coming up. Exceptionally mild across eastern parts of America but much colder in the north and the west of the states. Week 2 Temperature knowledge of the CFS from the 17th, 23rd of January. Again, very substantially uh, mild and average for the UK and for all parts of Europe as well. 
eastern and southeast America look very mild. Northern and western parts of America look much colder. Uh, big changes for America into week 3, April 24 to 30 of January, November. Cold air plunges into most parts of the states, even manages to push into the east of the states. This fundamental change in the pattern for America, though, makes absolutely no difference to uh, to Europe and to the UK because we remain milder than average, as does most parts of Europe. Although it does turn a bit colder in the southeastern corner of Europe. And then week 4... Uh, Temperature anomaly, which is going to be the 31st of January, 6th of February. Rounds it all off for us. Very, very mild uh, again. And for all parts of the Europe also exceptionally mild there. In America, it does look cold. And not as cold um, uh, in America in week four as it is in week three. But nevertheless, it's a lot cold across much of the states in weeks three and four compared to weeks one and two. But for us, this fundamental pattern change for America downstream does not make much difference seemingly upstream into the UK and into Europe. Finally, precipitation anomalies. So uh, week one precipitation anomaly from the 10th 16th of January is wetter than average for the UK and for Ireland too. Week two goes drier. So this is 17th, 23rd of January. Wet and average conditions pushed away. And uh, most places go on to the drier than out of sight as that high pressure builds in. We're back tomorrow. Sound conditions again in week three. This is 24th to 30th of January. Slightly above average precipitation then. And week four rounds it all off. We're back to wetter conditions. Exactly where we started, really. Very mild and wet from the 31st of January to the 6th of February. Let's see if we can get rid of that and that. And we'll get rid of that too. And we'll round up the video. So, um, if you're waiting for cold and winter and snow... There's nothing doing there whatsoever with either the GMA or the CFS. They suggest we might get a little bit of a frostier interlude at some point in the second half of uh, of January. But then very quickly, by the end of January into February, we're back to square one, bringing in the Wesleys and bringing in very mild but also wetter conditions. Um, quite big changes through the latter part of January for America, but seemingly doesn't make or eastern parts of America anyway, but seemingly doesn't make any difference for us and for Northern Europe. So we shall see, anyway, it's just a snapshot of what the models are showing. At the moment, today, they are showing that uh, winter 2019-2020 continues to be exceptionally mild. They could be wrong on that, or we could see changes in the week ahead. But we know you go on what they're showing today. It's a snapshot of what they're showing today. It could all look very different next week. And what they're showing today in that snapshot is that this exceptionally mild winter is set to continue. So we shall see where we go from here. And of course, we'll be back later on with your week to 10 day video update. That's going to have all the regular features. Will there be any size or something a little bit more seasonable coming up in that? You'll find out later on this afternoon. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.